Austin here. So this has kind of been a video that's been in the back of my head for a while now. For those handful of people that have uh, watched more than one of my videos uh, over the years, uh, you've seen that I've done like a few on the Mountains to Sea Trail. Uh, the Mountains to Sea Trail is very special for me uh, for a few reasons. This has actually been a video that I've been thinking about doing for a while um, and just kind of putting together everything uh, in one place uh, that I use to kind of plan my trips on the Mountains of Sea Trail. Uh, I'm by no means an expert at this, uh, and there are a lot, a lot of folks out there that are much smarter than me uh, that have devoted themselves to this trail. Uh, and so fortunately, they have put together some good stuff that I'm gonna uh, go over today. I'm generally one of those people that has to learn uh, from mistakes, <laughs> and I've made some in my life. Uh, so uh, just take this video as a grain of salt. Uh, just from a guy that uh, makes a lot of mistakes and uh, talks to a camera for fun. That being said, uh, the Mountains of Sea Trail is uh, 1,175 miles long, uh, and I have done uh, about 400 of those miles. I've done segments uh, one, two, 10, and then uh, the paddle route uh, down the Noose River, uh, so segments 11A to 16A. I've actually paddled from the Falls Lake Dam in Raleigh all the way down to the coast. So I may not be uh, an expert, but I've, like I said, I've made plenty of mistakes along the, along those 400 miles. So hopefully you can learn something from them. I will, uh, I'll just go ahead and put it out there. If you only do one thing to prepare for your trip on the Mountains of Sea Trail, go to uh, mountainsoftheatrail.org. Uh, that is a website put on by the Friends of the Mountains of Sea Trail. That's the foundation um, that manages the trail and uh, they have an absolute plethora. Jefe, what is a plethora? Why, Wapo? An absolute plethora of information uh, that uh, everything from trail guides, uh, how to donate, how to volunteer, history of the trail, uh, different media, trail angels, trail updates, just about anything you could possibly want to know about the trail is going to be on that website. So again, if you only do one thing, go to that website uh, and that will probably answer most of your questions. That being said, if you're only going to do two things to prepare for your Mountains of Sea Trail hike, uh, download the MST Guide app. Uh, this is an app right now that's only for Android, uh, but I have been talking to uh, the, the folks that have been developing it. And for you iPhone users out there, don't fret, your app is coming. The Mountains of Sea Trail uh, is uh, very fortunate, or we are very fortunate to be able to have so many different resources to help plan. Uh, for you visual learners out there, I'm a visual learner. Um, they have an interactive map uh, that you can zoom in and out uh, and actually see the trail across North Carolina, uh, which is very cool. Uh, and so you can zoom in, it has, uh, you can view it for uh, each segment, parking areas, it's got mile markers, uh, it's very, it's very good to just look at, to get an overall sense of the trail, what it is, where it is. Uh, it will show you which parts are trail, which parts are road walking. Um, very, very helpful. Uh, the other thing that I use uh, a whole bunch, and this is where the trip planning comes in, uh, are under uh, the trail segment guides. So for each trail segment, uh, there are uh, PDF guides that you can download for free uh, that have just about every nugget of information you could possibly want about that segment. Uh, some really, really smart folks uh, put some time in developing these. Uh, they have everything uh, from uh, just a general overview uh, of the segment, uh, different parking places or parking locations, uh, camping locations, uh, water sources, uh, different lodging options depending on uh, where you are. Uh, it's just a lot of really, really good information. So in each trail guide, there's some verbiage, and uh, the best way I can describe it is like turn-by-turn -turn instructions. Uh, very, very helpful uh, so that you don't have to be glued to a GPS or a map or anything like that. And one of the things I will do to make it a little more user-friendly for the trail as far as having it available as you're hiking uh, is I will uh, copy and paste the, word, the, uh, the verbiage into a Word document and make like a little booklet like this. Uh, and then I can have that uh, here in my pocket uh, and I can be like, okay, am I here at this trail junction? This is mile, whatever, 4.4. Uh, and I know exactly where I am without even having to look at a map. Uh, I know how far I've come, how far I need to go, that kind of thing. So that's, that's very helpful. The other really cool thing uh, that's on that page is a link to uh, the hiking project. 
Uh, and the hiking project actually has a, even more information, uh, elevation uh, profiles, uh, and the thing that I like uh, the most about it is it has a GPX file download. So you can download uh, the, the trail file uh, and then you can upload that to your GPS devices. So in my case, um, I carry a Garmin inReach. I can download that uh, GPX file and then upload it on my Garmin. And so now I've got the trail on my Garmin. Uh, the other thing that I'll uh, put it on, I use uh, Gaia on my phone uh, for, uh, for navigation and that kind of thing. You can also upload that file to Gaia. So now I've got the trail on my phone, on my GPS. Uh, very, very, very helpful. One of the other, I guess you call it byproducts, uh, that I've kind of gleaned from the trail segment guides is for when my brother and I uh, paddled the Noose River uh, last spring. Uh, and so one of the things that uh, I wanted to be able to do um, I wanted to have a quick guide uh, to know where I was at any particular time, how far, how far we'd come, how far we needed to go, how far uh, to the next waypoint, whatever it was. I wanted to have a quick access guide uh, that I could, I could look at because we were paddling 170 miles over eight days. So um, carrying a big guidebook uh, and having something that's weather resistant uh, that I can look at, doesn't take up a lot of space, uh, was, was challenging. So. I geeked out uh, and made this data sheet, uh, laminated it, and, uh, and it turned out to be really, really helpful for me. But what this enabled me to do was, uh, well, so let's say I'm at uh, the Highway 70 boat ramp, and I want to know how far I've got to go to the Pelican Landing fish camp. I'm just picking two random waypoints. I can look at those two waypoints. Uh, and then look and see exactly how far it is between those two points. What this helped us do was um, inevitably trips um, change, plans change, circumstances change, and so what you might, where you might plan to camp or uh, you're trying to come up with some different options, uh, this enabled us to kind of shoot from the hip a little bit uh, and make some educated decisions about uh, mileage and destinations and where we needed to go and where we needed to be by a certain point in the day, that kind of thing. Um, so that was very, very helpful. Uh, and again, this is something that I created on my own based on the information from the trail segment guides on the MST website. So what I will do is uh, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, you can download it if you want uh, and then do with it as you will. Some of the other things that are on the website uh, that I found very helpful were actually some uh, links to guidebooks. Uh, so I am, for the most part, a overnight backpacker. That's how I experience the trail. So I'm generally not gonna be doing uh, many day hikes or anything like that, but there's a book on there uh, called Great Day Hikes on North Carolina's Mountains to Sea Trail. Uh, and uh, in that book are 40 different day hikes uh, that you can do, uh, and it's broken down, uh, so it's very, very user-friendly. Um, I don't own the book or I would show it to you. I'll put a few links uh, to some folks that I watch on YouTube um, that actually uh, go out and do those. Uh, and then also uh, I'll put a link down in the description for uh, Jester Hikes. Uh, she's got a great podcast. She does some uh, day hikes there as well. So um, definitely check them out if you're interested in the day hike option. The other uh, guidebook um, that's on the website that, that I have purchased and, and then uh, I use, I've used it on my uh, segments one and two hikes uh, is uh, the trail, trail Profiles and Maps. Um, this is a, there is a ridiculous amount of information uh, com contained in such a small book. Uh, I, and I mean ridiculous in a good way. Like it's just amazing at the information that they can pack into such a small book. Um, but this has uh, trail profiles, uh, tr the features, switchbacks, um, elevation, elevation grade information, um, just <laughs> a lot of information. Uh, and so I've, I've used that uh, on my, uh, last two uh, hikes in the mountains. The book was put together by uh, the Carolina Mountain Club. And uh, like I said, it's just been a very, very helpful book for, for me personally to, to use for planning, to kind of get an idea of what the trail is gonna be like. Um, know how much pain I've got to endure uh, on the front end. Uh, so it's very helpful. Uh, the thing that I have done to make this more user-friendly to actually have with me out on the trail uh, is I will, um, figure out which section I'm going to be hiking, and then I'll scan the pages uh, into a PDF document and actually just keep that on my phone uh, so that I can pull it out, look at it. Okay, I know that for the next 
1.75 miles, uh, we've got a 12% incline or something like that. Um, so it's got all that information in there uh, and it's very, very detailed. And then lastly, uh, something I'm old fashioned. And so uh, even in today's technology, uh, I still bring a paper map. Uh, so especially uh, out in the mountains, um, you just need a map. And uh, so the, my, kind of my go-to maps are the, the National Geographic. And so I have, I have a collection uh, and I will usually, whatever trail we're going to be on, I'll have a, a National Geographic map uh, to go along with it. And I actually had to break it out uh, on our segment two hike uh, when Joe and I got, uh, I won't call it lost. No, we'll call it lost. We got lost uh, on segment two uh, in the middle prong wilderness uh, where the, the blazes uh, disappeared. Uh, we took a wrong trail and I had to break out the map and the compass to figure out where we were. Um, so, kind of justification. Uh, some some ultraliders might think that the maps are uh, a waste of weight, um, but I'm probably always going to have a paper map with me no matter what. So, map and compass never fails. Uh, the next thing I will talk about uh, is the MST Guide app. I cannot understate how uh, helpful this app is for one for planning and then two just being out on the trail. I'm not affiliated with uh, the Mountains of Sea Trail or with the MST Guide or, or anything like that, um, but I just think that it's a, a fantastic app. Uh, I've used it on my uh, segments one and two hikes. Went ahead and downloaded all of the waypoints for the entire trail. And if you're if you're waffling on whether you need to download the waypoints, just download the waypoints. Uh, you'll thank yourself later. Uh, it's very very helpful um, to get kind of get a lay of the land. What it does is you can follow yourself in real time on the trail. Uh, it'll show you uh, your next waypoint. It'll give you the exact mileage that you have to go to that waypoint. Um, it, it shows you uh, water sources, campsites, um, things that may be in the, in the trail segment guides that you find on the MST website, but they're not on a map anywhere. Uh, and so the MST guide actually maps it out so that you can have a visual idea of what you're looking at um, and, and know that uh, you know, where your next water source is, where your next campsite is. So the, uh, the app is very, very helpful uh, in just showing you where you are on the trail um, sh and, and different waypoints, uh, different features, things that you're going to want to know. Uh, they're right there on the map. Um, the things that it doesn't do, and I'll say yet, because um, Josh uh, is actively working uh, to uh, develop this app. Um, the things that it doesn't do, it, um, it doesn't show you any other any other trails uh, around it. Um, this became an issue uh, when Joe and I got off trail um, in Middle Prong Wilderness on segment two, uh, where I, we happened to stop. I looked down at the app and I was like, huh, we're off in no man's land. Um, we were off of the trail. You could see that we were off of the trail, but I couldn't see, I, we, I couldn't see what trail we were on. Uh, I couldn't see uh, you know, anything like that. Um, so that's a limitation right now. That being said, uh, I've already uh, heard from Josh that uh, they're already aiming to fix that and actually add uh, different map layers on there. So that's fantastic. Um, the other thing uh, I mentioned earlier was that the, right now the app is only for Android. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, they are actively developing the uh, iPhone uh, version as well, the iOS version. Um, that's just, it's coming. So some of the other things uh, that, from what I understand, uh, they're developing for the app to, to make it better. Uh, are the ability for you to create waypoints, share those waypoints, make them public so that other people can see them. At some point, you're gonna be able to upload photos, kind of like gut hooks where you can pull up uh, photos of campsites and stuff like that. You'll be able to uh, report any trail maintenance that might need doing. The other thing I'm excited about uh, will be adding in uh, the paddle route. So the, the segments 11A to 16A on the Noose River, uh, he's gonna add that route uh, into the guide as well. So. Um, but the, the guide is, is I, like I said, I can't say enough good things about the MST guide. It has kept me from getting lost more than once. And so I gotta give two humongous thumbs up uh, to Josh uh, for creating such a fantastic app uh, and a resource uh, for all of us hikers out there. Um, if you would like to know more about the, just kind of how it came to be, get to know the, the folks that developed it, uh, I will, I'll put a link down in the description, but Jester Hikes did a uh, interview podcast uh, with Josh PBS. Uh, PBS is his trail name. 
you get to meet Josh through that podcast, uh, super cool guy. Um, I've kind of traded a few emails with him, uh, just getting to know the app. I loved the app before I listened to the podcast, um, but after listening to Josh's story, how the app came to be, uh, I was just like, oh man, yeah, this is awesome. I love the I love the app even more. The last thing I'll uh, kind of put out there uh, is is mainly just a request uh, for everyone that's out there that uses the trail, that loves the trail, that loves the outdoors. Try to give back in some way uh, to the trail, whether that's uh, through your time volunteering, whether that's through donating money, uh, or whether that's just through cleaning up trash while you're out there. Um, just something to give back um, so that we can all kind of contribute to this thing that we all love. The other thing that's on the website are, are different ways to uh, volunteer or uh, set up donations. The other thing that I do uh, is uh, on Amazon, um, I've set up the Friends of the Mountains of Sea Trail as uh, my designated charity uh, to donate to. So all of my uh, Amazon Smile orders, uh, so when I buy a case of monster drinks off of Amazon, uh, the Friends of the Mountains of Sea Trail actually gets a little chunk of that. So that is a super easy way to donate, um, but there's other ways to donate as well. Uh, and like I said, it doesn't have to be money. It can be time, you can show up for a work day, uh, you can pick up trash on the trail on your own, um, anything to make uh, this thing that we all love better um, is, is wonderful. It's very, very important that we all contribute to that and all give back uh, so that we can all enjoy it. So that's all I've got. Um, like I said, uh, the, the things that I've listed here uh, as far as planning uh, resources is not an exhaustive list. There's tons of stuff out there. Uh, and uh, I'm sure I will make plenty of more mistakes. But if there's something else that uh, you think that you use that I missed that I didn't talk about, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I'm always learning uh, and I'm always interested at uh, how other people plan, uh, what they use, uh, and I'm always, I can always do something better. So, so feel free to leave me a note uh, if you've got anything you wanna add. So hopefully you got something out of this. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.